So welcome this evening. This is office hours tagged with Ask Me Anything. So we're doing an AMA style. And this is something that we're trying out that's a little bit different from things we've done in the past. So uh, this kind of AMA format. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about me, my name's Seth. I'm one of the, the technical coaches here who works in the study on study groups pretty much exclusively at this time. Um, I graduated from the full stack web developer program in the beginning of July and had a front end react position for three months about a month after I, I graduated got that and uh, afterwards that was a early stage startup and I've since moved on to doing some QA work for a software company here locally where I'm at in Nashville. Um, specifically, we do software solutions for the telecom industry. So unless you work for a telecom provider in broad management or um, revenue assurance, you probably haven't heard of us. Um, if you do one of those things or are coming from one of those industries, feel free to ask me who I work for. But otherwise, I won't bore you people with that stuff. So that's the quick rundown on who I am. I spent 10 years in hospitality before making a career change. So a career changer going into this and yeah, do the study groups part time. So this is ask me anything. It is tagged to welcome and intro to Ruby development. So code questions are fair game. However, I also don't want you to shy away from things that aren't code questions. I know that when, I talked to my supervisor, some of the feedback that she got about me specifically and, and gave me was that people really like hearing about things outside of just the labs and just what's going on in the curriculum, things about jobs and, and, and such and what happens afterwards and how, how topics connect in real life to things. So, you know, when I, when I do a, a lab on say SQL and I discuss how, you know, we're, we're using SQL where I work and, you know, we have a, a customer that uses our software and processes, you know, 700 million rows of SQL a day and that type of thing, uh, connecting those dots and how things are used out in the wild, people are interested in too. So I'm really open in this ask me anything format to anything. Um, it doesn't have to be code related. So Beth, you have a regex question. That's cool. Um, and anything else that you, any of you can think of, I'm sure you have questions about lots of different things. So it doesn't have to specifically be about the curriculum. Um, that's, that's cool, but I do want to open up to some things outside of that. I think there's a um, massive amount of resources devoted to curriculum questions. So if you have some stuff that's outside of that and you've never known where to ask it or haven't maybe felt comfortable asking it, shoot, go for it. Um, so I just wanted to default to that and give that little preface to this group. Um, yes, Jamie, I am in Nashville. I did say that. So uh, outside of this little intro, I'm going to let you the students kind of direct where we go. I'm here to one, answer questions, but that doesn't mean that us as a group can't answer each other's questions. So if, you know, we go to Beth and we see a regic question and you have experience in that and you have an answer to that, I highly encourage you to jump in and help each other out and build that community as well. And not just, you know, let me dominate in the Q and a format, but if that's how, you know, we naturally flow and, and go, I think that's awesome too. So really I'm going to open up the virtual floor at this point to anybody who wants to ask questions, you can throw them out in the chat. You can speak them. Uh, I highly encourage you to just, if you're in a place where you can, unmute your microphone and talk um, because it's nice to hear voices um, outside of my, my own sometimes. Um, so yeah, cool. Ready to get in some questions? I think my rejects question, rejects, well, however you pronounce it, probably will be quite quick. Um, so is it, if it's okay to just show you what yeah. I'm dealing with? Here, All I'll right. So I'll, I'll, if you want to share your screen, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, that's a cool idea. I will do that. 
So I have about 20 tabs open <laughs> from trying to figure out <laughs> this lab, which I've now done. I've finished it. But um, I don't entirely understand how this, the last one works. And I was just wondering if you could just talk me through it. Like, I understand all of the individual elements, but I'm not really sure, uh, particularly these parentheses. I'm... <laughs> um, I'm like on the edge of getting it, but I don't really get it. <laughs> I was wondering if you just chat me through that expression. Okay, give me just a moment. Because I, yeah. I think regex is one of those things that everybody struggles with. I've never met somebody who's like a master at it. Um, okay. It's very, it's a very useful tool. And that's why we teach it. But it, you also see we only teach it in one lab, <laughs> because of the, the scope of it. It's, it fits a very particular type of problem. And that's how people use it. So let me see. I'm going to have to reference my notes. So I'm throwing this into something. Sure. Else. No, I have, I'm not joking when I say, I mean, check out my, this is my, <laughs> that's oh, yeah. what I'm looking at. So what's got me through this. And I, I understand the others eventually. I use that, the Rubular thing to sort of experiment. But it's just this last one. I'm... Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's really neat. Okay, so let me throw this resource in the chat just because I never realized that it actually did this. Um, so I don't know if you use regexer at all, but I just uh, took your regex and put it in there. Okay, yeah, I have this open somewhere, but I think I opened it so early in my in the lab, I already was not happy looking at that. So I, I was using um, this a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, take your regex from your, uh, your lab in the code editor okay. and paste it into here. To here, yeah? Yeah. And oh. get rid of yeah, the front and the back. What's that G? Oh, global search. Yeah. Okay. So, something that I never noticed until just now, um, and this is more targeted to JavaScript. But if you scroll down in this tool section, there's an explanation of each part. Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> oh, that's super cool. Um, All right. Like I said, oh, I've, wow. I've, I've never noticed that ever. I don't know if it's new or if it's just something I never realized was there, but. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> like I was, I was thinking, okay, now I need to parse this and figure out exactly what's going on because I'm not, honestly, not that great, so to speak, at regex either. It's you know yeah. always playing around with something like this to figure out what I need, and I was like, oh wait, there's an answer here or there's an explanation yeah. here. I figured it was something that I could always look up, but I just, just to be able to understand what what I've looked up <laughs> was basically my aim. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I'll check that out. And um, yeah, should I take that? I'll take that and have a look. And then if I'm still really confused, I could raise my hand again. Yeah, go go look at that. Or I guess you are right now and see what you, if that yeah. clears it up for you. Um, All right. But yeah, cool. that's cool that I never realized that resource was there like that. And like I said, this is targeting JavaScript. And what does it say? PHP slash PCRE. Um, the syntax is should be really similar in Ruby, but something like Rubular is going to give you the true match in the end. Um, yeah. So just be wary of that. There could be some small differences between the two. Uh, okay. And how they're implemented. Got it. Cool. Thank you very much. That's super useful. Yeah, you're welcome. And like I said, um, I just noticed that I'd never noticed it before in this platform, and I've used it a bunch. So that's going to help me out. <laughs> Seth, can you talk about when we would use regex in like our coding? Yeah, for like sure. Practical application. So the first company that I worked for when I graduated at Flatiron is uh, uh, named Resli, um, R-E-Z-L-I. And something that we did as a social network was we took, you know, stuff that you posted into a status update and we parsed it. So we had regex built into that input field where if it matched, say, a YouTube URL, 
we knew to go hit, we could pull out and match the YouTube video identifier from there and then find the video and pull in its screenshot and connect it and link it and do all that stuff with it. So we built regex uh, matchers for each type of different piece of media that we wanted to match. So if it was Giphy, if it was uh, YouTube, if it was Twitch, if it was whatever, we built all those matchers into methods. And then if it matched one, we'd call another method and do what we needed to do to get that info into our platform and display it on our timeline. So that's one uh, use that I think is very practical. So, you know, when you're posting links into Facebook or somewhere else, the way that it can figure out what link that is and how it should treat that link. So treating a, a picture link different than a video link or pulling in, uh, you know, scraped metadata from a site so that you get those little previews and everything, all that's coming because something had to match. Um, and typically that's done using regular expressions. Um, other places that they're used behind the scenes in HTML5, when you're doing things like you can set a type to phone number or email, things like that, those are regular expressions that are in the background uh, doing those validations for us. So that's a couple of places that they're used um, in, I guess, the real world in the wild. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so I have a little question about iterators, actually. Um, I don't know if anyone else is stuck on the iterators lesson. Uh, but so what I'm trying to figure out is the task at hand has you to use the board array. And when you use board dot each, actually, you know, I can just, I guess I can screen share. I don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Okay. All right, here we, everyone see my screen? Um, I'm not. Oh, oops. Um, okay, how no, about now? Yes. Yeah. Awesome, yay, okay, perfect. So what I'm really confused about is, I don't understand why we're passing this array to uh, this method at all. Like, if it's going to return the board array, when we iterate over it using the dot each, why wouldn't we just do like an array dot length or something uh, method just to get that counter? I don't know. I, I'm kind of confused about it. So if anyone wants to chime in, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Give me just a second. Let me intro to Ruby iterators and get to this. Well, yeah, no, no worries. So I can see the exact context of what we're talking about here. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, poor mm. little guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's something about this headset where apparently background noises sound really, really loud to everyone else because it's so quiet here. Um, yeah, I think she's just mad because she can't do exactly what she wants all the time. <laughs> um, here, let me get this and we can look at it. This one. Uh, TBT dash 10 dash current player B0 zero, zero, zero. Uh, bundle. Okay, there we go. Cool. Have everything already. And TTT 10 lib. Um, uh, I already have code in here, so let me make a new file real quick. Uh, rename this one to okay. Uh, and let's see what the spec is telling us. Oh. 
Five, spec. Okay. There we go. Okay. So your question had to do with the iterator for this turn count method? Correct. I, I'm just kind of confused why we need to iterate over the board array when we only, when we know it has nine slots. I, I don't know. I just, I don't understand the relationship between the array and then iterating over it. If, because what my error is I'm getting the return value of the array with like three X's and O's in it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the number. So I'm a little lost. Sorry. Sorry okay. guys. This yeah, no, no, no problem. So we're iterating over the array because let's look at, look at the actual test that can sometimes give us a little bit better context. Um, yeah. And let's watch this for now. So we see that we have different boards variables because as, as we play the game, the board is going to change. So sometimes we're going to have O's, sometimes we're going to have exit. Well, we're always going to have O's or X's, um, but different numbers of O's or X's in different positions. So to know how many turns have occurred and to count that, we have to iterate through our array and have some sort of way of counting if there are X's or O's and not just empty, empty spaces. So what we're really looking to do is to set up something where we can, you know, match if either if there's an X or an O in there, or if there's, you know, blank spaces and do a difference of, you know, nine, because like you said, we know there's always going to be nine spaces in the board. However, we don't know, and what we're trying to find out is how many of those spaces have letters in them at this point. So, oh, you threw your code in here. That works. Copy. Uh, what is it? Ray. Oh. Well. I wasn't trying to format. I was just trying to space it out. Okay. So right now, this is always going to return the same thing, no matter how many spaces are full. So when we sit here and think about this, we're, we're on the right track. You have a counter set up to keep track of things and you're iterating through the board. Um, and every time you iterate, you're getting, you're incrementing the, the, the counter. However, at this point, there's nothing to say, if that space is empty, don't count it, or when we should increment the turn counter. So really, you're, you're close, and I just think the, the the logic that you're thinking about right now might not be connecting like you were saying. So, oh, I got this little invisible zoom thing over here. Let me move it out the way. Okay. So, if we didn't call this turn number, let's say we called this, because this is going to represent what's in that array. So, if we have, you know, uh, let's get one of these examples back. If we have this, then this, what is called turn number now, is going to be this, then it's going to be this element, then it's going to be this element, then it's going to be this element, and so on and so forth as we move through each iteration. So while it doesn't matter what is in this block right here, this return number is, this, this placeholder variable, I'd like to keep it for my own kind of sanity and to remember what, what things are standing for. I would call this, uh, you know, like uh, space or yeah, space might work because it's a space on the board. 
it, it's representative of one of those squares. Okay. And then we'll want to think, so how, what do you think we could do to, or anybody, you know, we're all here together, we could do so that we still want to increment this, but we only want to increment it if there's something in one of these spaces. Well, it sounds like since we already know that we have an amount, I guess we can do space minus one, as opposed to iterating up, we could iterate down because we know that there's an, in, there's a finite amount. I don't know. That's, but then you're still getting the wrong number. So right now, let's say we're on our first iteration and let me look real quick. Okay. We have our spec in here. I don't know if I need the require, but I'll just put it there. Okay, so we are in our iteration right now. So if we look at space, we have an O. So when we have an O, we want to increment. So what what could we do that says you know when i when space is an o i want to run this mm, i'm not sure sorry anybody out there so if, um what if we go go through each of them iterate through each of them and check what the what's inside it and you could do that with a space of double equals matching a an o or an x and you're saying if if that's what i want then go for it so space double equals you could say o Close our block, and then to handle, um, we can do or. And then you can have it equal to an X. There we go. <laughs> okay, it's making a lot of worse sense now. Thanks, guys. And then get out of this completely now. Now we still have one more piece for this method. And I think our test will tell us. Am I going crazy? Like, um, can you just put all and not the pipe? Uh, you need double pipe. I think you can put. Ah, oh, weird. Under, under case or. What? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Ruby> is weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I used it in my solution. Um, I don't know if I need to do that or if I just did it and it worked. Um, Ruby is very conversational and that's why a lot of people really love it. Um, you'll watch lectures and people will go, you know, what am I trying to do? I want to do or let me just write or and see if it works. And it will. Um, so right now, we're not getting back our number. So we just we need to return our number or our turn count. So if we return turn count, this should work, I believe. Doesn't that need to be within the method? Oh yeah, it's down there. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, that works. And yeah, you can just type or <laughs> under under. Uh, lowercase. If you type it uppercase, that means something else, apparently, because um, we threw an error on that. Oh, because it's a constant of some sort, or it's looking for a constant. So yeah, one thing to 
to try when working on these is throwing the pry in and I like throwing prize and probably the most that I've ever used prize or the most common case where I've used prize is inside of iterators like this to look at what you know the actual singular item is and then when I concentrate on that singular item um, you know I might slowly get here so I would probably start with something like this and you know I'll have because that's my first example I have an O and then that won't pass because I'm not picking up the X's. I'll say, okay, now I need the X. I'll say, or space equals X. And then that's passing, but it, we saw it wasn't returning. So really kind of working through piece by piece to get to the final solution in the end. Cool. Awesome. That, that Thank making you. sense? Thanks so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So let me get back up. Okay, Denise, building modules without using the self keyword. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. Can you elaborate some? Yeah, sure. Um, there's a lab or maybe a couple module lab where you know when you're developing the the methods where you're taking the methods from whatever class you're using and you're putting them in the, the module space or in the, the module so we built them in the class method or in the instance method you have at or double at or you use self but then you want to kind of compartmentalize everything into the module scope. So I'm having a hard time going from, you know, for example, self dot all or whatever the self dot method classes, because once you have self, it, it belongs to the module as opposed to that class. So if we have a, a method that we want to use across several different classes saying, Okay, so really kind of where Where to take it from the self that's referring to the class and how to take it to the to the module and be able to refer to several different classes. Okay, let me see if I have a good example here. Hey, welcome. Uh, okay. Um, let's see, code, 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 code. This has modules. There's, there's an intro to modules lab where they ask you to do that. And I don't even know where to start because if I, you know, all of my, for example, they have two different class. So if I create my uh, method within my artist class, but then I want to move it and be used in as for the song class as well. How do I make that change from, you know, self dot all for the artist and make it self dot all for any class, but it won't be self dot all. It has to be something dot all, but I don't know what that something is. Okay. So I think, your question is more a question about self than actually the usage of modules. Yeah, of modules I understand. It's just how to transfer from the class to the module so that the module can be used over many different classes or many different instances. Okay. So let's uh, let's think about the inheritance of modules. Module class. Okay. Let's see if we can get a good example here. It's not helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, it's on the we file. There we go. And let's get some of this stuff broken down. Okay. 
So when you use self, let's. Let's get this example that I found. Maybe it'll clear things up some. Copy, paste. There we go. I think it's just a little bit smaller so it all fits on the screen. So here's our module. We have a module of foo. And we have a class of bar that includes foo. And then we have one method in bar. That's saying try it. We have A, and we call foo.b, foo.z. But if we call bar.new, I guess we don't have self in here. Oh, yes, we do self class name <laughs> to show where these are being scoped to. So when you use, when you see self in an instance method, it's going to refer to the instance of the class in which the module is included. Correct. So, yeah. So this self isn't going to directly connect to foo here. It's going to, this self is going to be referring to bar in this context. Now. Okay. See, so I did in the module that it referred to the module scope, but that's not the case. So it'll refer to the module if it's in a class method. So if it's not in an instance mm -hmm. method, this is an instance method. So this is going to point to whatever this module is included in, this self is. So this self is going to bubble up, so to speak, to the class that this module is inside of, in this instance bar. Whereas we see if we were running bar.new try it, where we're going to call all three methods, we see A is going to talk about the class, but B and C are talking about the module. And that is because these are class methods, not instance methods. So how do we know that B? I mean, I can C is a class method. I see that the self is there, but how do we know that B is a class method? So that is being called on the module itself with the capital first letter. We know that we're targeting this right here. Mm -hmm. So self is just a placeholder. This is really referring to in this instance, this. So writing self.c or writing foo.c are, are equivalent. So if we wrote a method here that was bar.all, that could be something that, you know, add at all if we had such a thing. Mm -hmm. And that would be a method that's being defined on the class bar. Right. So is that making sense? Yep. Be self dot bar dot no, it's bar already, so it's self dot all already. Okay, go ahead, carry on. I'm sorry. Oh no. no. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah, that part makes sense. Okay. It's just when we're in the module. So if it's a self dot c, I'm referring to the module, but if it is pulled into a class, then it is also referring to the module within the class. Is that correct? Yes. So it's all about how we define the method. So this, this A is an instance method. Mm -hmm. So this is going to refer to the class that the module is included in. Mm -hmm. Now, class level methods are, or I guess class methods is not the best phrase. Any method that isn't an instance method in this in, in this case, that, that's part of a module is going to refer to the module. Since modules aren't classes. Mm -hmm. 
now this foo.b and the self.c, I could use in any class that needed those methods, right? I could just pull it into any class and leave it as is and just say, use this module. Yes, as long as you include foo into the class, you could use these and they will, they will act on this module. But, okay, so if, let's look at the self.all that you defined, def self.all at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to include that within the module, how would I rename that, or would I rename that, so that we know that it's referring to those to the class? So you shouldn't have to, because we know where it's being defined. It's being defined in this bar class. Mm-hmm. So, but if, say, we wanted to use it in several different classes, it's some functionality that can be used in several different classes, so we move it into module. Does it change at all, or does, does the name stay the same? Okay, so, if, yes, if this was put in a module, then we wouldn't want it to be self, because if we called it self, we'd be referencing this module. Right. So it would have to be all. So it's just all right now, and it can be used across all modules. Got it. Oh. Now, that is considering. Yeah, see, that's the this, problem. This that's, that's my confusion. Okay, let's see. Uh -huh. The self is very, it's one concept that I'm having a difficult for some reason. Okay, I know where our disconnect is coming from. And it's coming from, you can define two different types of modules. So you can define class, class methods and instance methods. And that's the difference between extend and include mm -hmm. uh, so let's see. we have this example in the curriculum and that intro to modules lab so these are going to act like class methods when they're included and these are going to act like instance methods when they're included so we're defining those specifically and Ruby's going to to differentiate them for us and that is how we can differentiate and know that they'll they'll act differently mm -hmm. so when we do our count here we know that we're going to act on the class that this is in and get that self dot all however this is going to become a class method so when we when we extend, here we have a bar or class bar. It would be something like extend memorable class methods. Mm -hmm. um, extend memorable. Instance methods. Well, they include from the instance okay. methods, right? Now we would do, be able to do things like bar dot um, count, and that would work. However, okay. we would have to do something like, you know, create a bar. And then we could do stuff like bar dot, well, we wouldn't call initialize like that, but 
um, to, sh to give the example. Mm -hmm. Then we could call the instance method on the instance, but we have two different types of methods that we're categorizing. Okay. So self will reference different things here because of the context mm -hmm. of these methods. Class method, it's accessing the class and within the instance method is accessing the instance of whatever that class is. Okay. So there's no need for the self in the naming of the methods when you're in the module. Um, no, I don't think you, you need it. Okay. Okay. I think that answers my question. Okay. Um, let's see. Emmy Kojima. I don't know if that's one, if, you're, if it's one or that's a first and last name or just one name, but either way. It's Emmy. Okay. <laughs> so you're um, asking about, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm asking. I'm not at modules yet. I'm in classes. Um, and I've been having like trouble understanding the difference between basically self and at when you are, um, when you have like a attribute accessor. Okay. Um, yeah. And I was like, I did um the cash register like oh cash register lab mm -hmm. and i did mine using like at total um instead of self dot total and it passed and then i went and looked at the solution that the lab provided and i saw that they were using self dot total okay give me just a minute And we can look at the differences. And then I guess maybe you can also talk about like when you choose to put things in at our accessor versus not. Okay. At our accessor is going to give us very simple and defined methods for those those properties so really if we want to do anything outside of just setting them and reading them we need to to use to put them somewhere else um, and then if you're more interested in when you use reader and writer versus accessor my default is to put them into an accessor first because that is where you, know, you get access to everything and then look at it at the end and say, okay, does I, do I really ever write to this? Do I ever read to this? Do I want to allow that between classes? Um, and then I kind of go from there and see what is what I have. Okay, there we go. So we got this one. And make another one. Nope. All right, lib, cash register. All right. So on the left, I have what should be your solution. And on the right, I have the solution branch that you were talking about. So we can look at the two and you know, compare and contrast. And I'll just scrunch some of this down so it fits better. Cool. All right. So looking at, let's see, get rid of this. Okay, so I'm seeing what you're talking about. Yeah. All right. 
So looking at at total versus self dot total. Mm -hmm. So really, you, it's just different syntax to do the same thing because self dot total is calling this accessor total and reading this total. So at total is doing the same thing, reading that variable. So they're just, in this instance, they're two ways of accomplishing the same thing, which ultimately I don't think is anything to really split hairs over. They're one of the, the beauties slash kind of angering things about Ruby <laughs> is that there's so many ways you can do things. Like, you know, I, I, I typed or, and it was like, oh, this works. There's another way to do this. Um, so some people find that very frustrating that there's so many ways to do things. Some people like the fact that it's so flexible. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say either is right or wrong. It's just a preference. Um, like I was going through, what is it? Scope in classes, um, in Rails models. There's this thing called scope that mm -hmm. you can do. And scope, like if you read the Rails documentation, it says scope and class methods are the same exact thing. It's just a matter of personal preference, which one you use. And it's like to some people that would be very, very frustrating. Um, but some people love that. So it's really just, it's the same exact thing. It's just two different ways of doing it in this instance. But is it only, like, will I, I guess my question is like, will I know? Because I feel like in initialize, I already have the at and the at discount and the at items. So that's self basically, right? Like mm -hmm. every time I am initializing something, like those are basically what like the apps are going to be set to, is that right? Yes. So this initialize is setting these up for every instance right. of the cash register class. So they're going to be available throughout this object. So all these methods are going to have access to them. So using and them makes sense. Yeah. And that's why dot like self dot total would be the same exact thing because the self refers to the instance, not the class. Yes. Because they're within like the method. Mm -hmm. Because they're instance methods. So self is referring to the instance. If they were class methods, then that self would be referring to the class. Okay, cool. I'm glad that, um, I guess I get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't want to want you to guess. I want you to know. And if we need to keep ch chatting about it, that's fine. And let's get it clear because I want to make sure that there's, you know, that solid understanding that you feel comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, I think like when I was using at, I felt really confident and then I passed the test and I was really confident and I looked at the solution and I'm like, why are they using self? And then I got very confused basically. Mm -hmm. But I think you've cleared it up. Yeah. And there's going to be multiple ways to do things in all of these labs. So right. um, some of them there won't be because the tests are going to be very, very, very narrow and strict. Um, a lot of the times the labs will tell you that they're going to be very strict. Um, so, but outside of those few labs that really have a very specific path that you have to follow, the code is probably not going to look like the solution branch. Or if you go and you know, look at the pull requests, look at everybody else's code, you know, all the other students, you'll see 20 different ways of doing this. And there's no quote unquote right or wrong just because, you know, the solution branch was written by someone on the curriculum team doesn't mean it's any better. It's just a personal preference for the way that person would solve this problem. Um, there's nothing that I say you would have to worry about syntax wise, or, you know, if, if it's passing the tests, then trust that the tests are doing their job. And, you know, if there's a wrong way to do something or, or something that as, you know, the curriculum team and the instruction team doesn't want students to do, the tests won't allow it. So if the tests are passing, then, you know, thumbs up and, and keep moving. If you see something in the, if you look at the solution branch or another student's, you know, solutions, I always like looking at other students' solutions out over the solution branch because the solution branch is written by people who 
haven't been students in a really long time. And a lot of times there's, there's ways of doing things in there that are just past the understanding of, you know, where you or any other student is at, at that moment in time in the curriculum. And it's just because it's hard to, you know, forget the things that are in your mind and not use them. So um, I always looked at other students for my kind of just, I wonder what how other ways to do this curiosity type of thing. Um, okay. If, if that might help. Um, Cause yeah, there were some solutions and a lot of things have been cleaned up um, over time, but the curriculum's always evolving. And you know, there were some things are like the solution didn't even had stuff in it. That wasn't even part of the problem. And I was like, there's stuff in here that nobody <laughs> needs. Um, and those things have been, been fixed and, but there's always things here and there and little things that uh, I know one thing that people see in a solution branch somewhere is uh, it's like, uh, I'm gonna say board because we had it before as an array. Something like that. I know that's in one of the solution branches and everyone's always like, what is that? Um, yeah, what is that? This is exactly the same as doing in basic terms. There's this whole, uh, not map, uh, like, if you're just gonna call one property off of the iterator each time, so it's very simple then that basically does that for you in less. Cool. And it has something, it, it's, that's the easiest way to explain it. There isn't any documentation for it. Um, I asked my local group of developers that I have access to, you know, who've been doing Ruby for long periods of 10 plus years. I was like, hey, can somebody give me a piece of documentation on this? Because I have students ask me all the time and nobody could find documentation on it. Um, so that I could point to a resource. So that is the simplest way to explain it. It has to do with procs and stuff, which I don't even really fully understand. So I don't try and explain it. <laughs> that is functionally, that's what it's doing. <laughs> so. Um, that's so cool. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Knowing that you're looking at the solution branch, you're probably gonna find that at some point and say, what is this thing? So now, and now you know. I'll be like, I know. Cool. Well, I guess we're coming up on time, it looks like. Uh, went by quick, it feels like. Let me, where am I looking for?